Welcome back. Welcome back. Oh, fuck. This you, is... did, you didn't do one, two, three, though. <laughs> this... <laughs> oh. Okay. Welcome back. Welcome back. This is the We Can Edit That Out podcast. We can edit that out. I'm Rob. I'm Jack. We're your uh, gracious host gracious. for an amazing action-packed podcast for you. Oh, this one's going to be <laughs> real action-packed. Uh, we're talking about tour stories. Um, so Rob and I were on a tour together. The only tour we've done together actually both of us have been on multiple tours this is the only one we did together was the uh, phalanx tour in europe uh what was it 2002 2002 that's yeah, it the, uh, the fall of 2002 so tell me about that <laughs> i'm just throwing it right in your lap i don't i got nothing <laughs> <laughs> okay so this was uh this was my first time touring europe it was my first time traveling there no you'd been to europe before We've, yeah we were there the the year previous year yeah the tour was set up by our drummer's brother, Kelly. Okay, so Kelly set up the tour. Yeah, Kelly was living in okay. uh, Stuttgart at the time. I didn't know. I just showed up. Yeah, okay. and uh, he organized the whole tour. We were going to do a portion of it with his band at the time, Cluster Bomb Unit. Mm -hmm. We were a very kind of well-known, long-running, uh, crust D-beat band from yeah. Germany. Uh -huh. However, Cluster Bomb Unit ended up having uh, some sort of scheduling conflict. They couldn't make the dates. But we ended up using the back line. So we borrowed Cluster Bomb Unit's back line, but we couldn't okay. get guitar uh, equipment. So every show on this tour, Brandon and me, the guitarists, had hmm. to borrow guitar equipment every single show. Heads okay. and caps. So we sounded different every single show, which was really weird. Well, it was nice for me, though. <laughs> <laughs> it was nice. It was nice for you, but uh, just just side note: I didn't play in the band. I was the uh, roadie uh, merchandise organizer. They call me the merch jerk. Well, we called you party dad, but we'll get into no. That, in that was party uncle. That's right, your party uncle. Kelly was party dad. I was party uncle. Because <laughs> party dad is 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 the okay guys got to get up at nine o'clock. We got to drive to Hengel over in the morning. And party uncle is when he goes, let's get fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the tour was about five weeks, four and a half weeks. We played yeah. like about 28 gigs. It was was it that fucking many? Yeah, we. I mean, we had we had a few cancellations too, but you know, it was a it was a pretty intense tour, and it was before the EU had become formalized. So right. we, we were still going into separate countries every single time. We did 11 different countries on that tour, and we had to exchange currency like 11 times. So that was also oh, a really interesting dynamic. Uh, it was super fun. Um, yeah, that was that was one of my jobs was figuring out the currency conversion and then writing on the merchandise list. Five hundred zlotties. Yeah. <laughs> how do you how do you write a zloty? Oh well, it's a Z with an L. Oh, of course. Right. Nobody knew who we were. We had just recorded a full length that we brought CDs with us. Right. And we had the some, LP wasn't. We released had some yet. of our old split seven inches with us, but we we really kind of just had CDs and shirts. Uh, yeah, it was it was pretty wild. Got to play with uh, some really amazing bands. Uh, discovered some of my favorite bands on that tour, and it was. It was like the time of a lifetime. Really. Uh, 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 I know we don't like name dropping on this podcast, but like uh, best bands on that tour, La Fraction. Easily. Easily. Anaroba, Anaroba was amazing. Fantastic. And you guys did do one show with Cluster Bomb Unit as well at the very end in Stuttgart. Yeah, that's right. They actually did. did. They did play with I us I remember there. that. It was, a, it was like our second to last show or something. One of the few, few shows about that tour i remember <laughs> i was drinking heavily back then and it was europe it was easy to drink heavily yeah so uh it was like a real eye-opening experience uh got to see you know we we had we had some of us had traveled there prior and we we had seen like shows and squats and we kind of learned more about the diy community then but that tour was the first time we were on the receiving end of like uh, european hospitality which right. was probably the biggest eye opener and yeah. we came back hoping and wanting to bring some of that culture mm -hmm. back with us to seattle and 
maybe we succeeded in some ways, maybe we didn't, but uh, it was uh, it was really amazing. There was a lot of really crazy stuff that happened on that tour too. So many weird weird stories. What's one you yeah. remember? Well, I mean, I, I I told you this when I showed up. I'm like, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna tell that story live because if I tell it twice, it's not gonna work. So, so here here's the thing: when you when you're on tour as a man, you actually don't get to sleep with a different girl every night. A lot of people think that, you know, it's like, no, you, it's pretty low tour is pretty lonely. So Kyle and I had not masturbated for three weeks at this point. And both of us were kind of counting the days of like, it's been a long time. I mean, when 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 you're on your own tour with a bunch of dudes and sleeping with a bunch of dudes, you you don't want to rub one out on your friend, you know. You you kind of keep it inside. <clears throat> so anyway, we were on the ferry from uh, not Copenhagen, but uh, Helsing Helsingboro, Helsingboro, something like that. You know where you take the ferry to Malmo. Mm -hmm. So we were on the ferry and me and Kyle passed the, I mean, uh, Europe is much more liberal than the States. They have nudity on their newspapers. So me and Kyle walked by these newspapers and we were both like, oh, God damn it. It's kind of doing it for me. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's doing it for me too. Okay, let's do this. So... <laughs> It's the most embarrassing story ever. So we both went into the, the restroom. Together? Yes. I know. I told you you could edit this out. This is, this is, but we both grabbed these free newspapers. And different stalls, of course. Well, you know, we, I mean, a lot of people thought we were gay, but we weren't. We were just best friends. And not that that matters, you know. But then we, we both went in and. Did the deed and and walked out like I feel so much better now. <laughs> Why did you go in there together? I, not like I I know weird like, right? Tag the other in when I when... know it was a weird thing. It was I mean uh, he and I were inseparable at points. We weren't always inseparable, but sometimes we were. So we were walking by the the newspaper stand like. Yeah, okay, let's do this. Yeah, I, I got to do this too. Yeah, okay, me too. Okay, cool. Let's just let's just do it and get it over with. Okay. And, you know, when, it, when, it, when it's been that long, it just happens really fast. You know, it was just like, shut the door, bam. Like, oh, well, that was quick. And then walked out like, oh, okay, cool. Hmm. So that was one of my funny stories from that tour. I, I, I hope that wasn't too embarrassing to myself. But... Uh... <laughs> uh, I, I, well, one thing people know about me is I have absolutely no shame. I'll tell you everything. Like, oh, yeah, this is how dumb I am. This is how weird I am. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Masturbated with my best friend in the bathroom of a ferry <laughs> on the way to Sweden from Copenhagen. <laughs> anyway but but a lot of people don't know that a lot of people don't understand that there's these like uh things that you have to think about on tour yeah i mean you're let's not make this the masturbation episode though certainly not <laughs> um touring is a very strange thing though because you you really do experience uh very long periods of time without any privacy right you're you're in a van for the majority of the time. You know, you're watching the countryside go by, weird countries, wherever you may be. You get to the venue, eat something, play a show, get drunk, cram into a room with all of your friends, all of whom are simultaneously snoring, and uh, you pass out and you kind of like wake up the next morning and you do it again. So it's this, you've got a lot of adrenaline because you're playing, yeah. you're playing, you're performing every night and you have to like deliver and you know, you have to try to keep yourself somewhat sane and healthy during the time while also being kind of a degenerate. So right. it's a, it's a really interesting dynamic. It's super fun. Yeah. That was, that was, that was, cause that was the only tour that I was ever the merch jerk on and that was an interesting one for me because uh, you guys were my best friends 
and when you were done playing, I was just sitting at a fucking table all night, you know? So you guys would be done, and you'd have this charge of like, and, I'm, and I was just sitting at a fucking table watching you guys, so I didn't have that adrenaline, like you were saying, you know? You, you have adrenaline every night. I'm like, yeah, I, I didn't get that. I, I, I was just sitting behind a fucking booth all day. Yeah. You know? However, there's also the downsides yeah. to having that adrenaline every night, and that's your sweating profusely drummer clothes. underwear yeah. i think we should have a whole episode about drummer underwear <laughs> here's the thing a lot of people don't know the drummer of almost every punk band will take off his underwear after the concert and hang it up inside the van from a hanger of some sort it's just it's it's everybody knows drummer underwear uh, quite honestly Phalanx was the only band I ever played in where drummer underwear was really a thing. Really? Because we had drummer underwear on the Blood Clot store. Jimmy, yeah. Jimmy had some drummer underwear. Zach must have had a very careful like filing system for his drummer underwear because he never dared. Zach is such a solid fucking human being, though. (laughs) I don't think he would sweat if he had a gun to his head. Oh, he sweats. Trust me. Does he? He sweats. He's like the most cool and calm and collected person I've ever met in my life. Yeah. He did have a gross towel, though. Yeah, he, he had, had a, a drummer towel. He had a drummer towel that he didn't okay, change. Okay. So it was like pretty gross. <laughs> uh, even just a few shows in, uh, and he'd wipe his shame off with. <laughs> <laughs> by, the, by the end of the tour, like maybe that thing had grown enough culture to be like displayed in the Louvre. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, with the first story I told and that story, we could we could call this episode "Wiping Off the Shame." <laughs> anyway, I didn't want to get too obnoxious about it. Uh, that was the tour we went on, but that wasn't the first tour you went on. What was the first tour you went on? So the first tour was I it? went on was Doomed. This uh-huh. was also with Phalanx. Okay, that was Phalanx, Hippies, and Flames. Hip- Phalanx and Hippies right. and Flames, who are our friend's band. They right. Were, were, I had a shirt from that tour. It was like the tour that didn't happen, and I had a shirt. Yeah. It was like, oh, how? So we were, we were so in a short bus uh, that used to belong to the Super Suckers, apparently. The singer of Hippies and Flames, Ryan, had just bought it, and we were going mm-hmm. to take it uh, on a three-week tour across the U.S. All right, Gilligan's Island. And <laughs> uh, we blew a tire, ended up in Wilsonville. Oregon. Wilsonville. We, had, we broke down and oh, we were bro. stuck there for a few days. We basically mm-hmm. had to cancel the entire tour. And then on that tour, mm-hmm. I find out that my mom had a brain aneurysm. And so I had to... Uh, I thought this was going to be a funny episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I ended up having to fly back. Now, after that... But the, your mom survived. My mom She's still survive. alive. Okay. Uh, we, uh, we got a preface. Uh, uh Preface. The first, Preface or preface? The first yeah. tour that I actually went on was uh, with a band I was in called Human Error, and we went on tour oh, down the West Coast. Oh, you were in Human Co- Error. Yeah. That's right. I went on on the on a West Coast tour with mm-hmm. our friends in Scarp, who are a very well known oh, uh, right. grindcore yeah. punk band yes, yes, from yes. Seattle, and oh. uh, we went down to Tijuana uh, from Seattle and mm-hmm. back up, and uh, it was. Super fun and amazing. And then, no, that, that tour was in 2000. So we didn't go on tour again until uh, two years later. So was the first Phalanx tour the one that I was on? The first Phalanx tour ever was really, I mean, we, we went down to like Oakland to play a fest. Yeah, I drove that one as well. Yeah. But the first real mm-hmm. tour longer than, you know, a few shows that Phalanx went on was a European tour. Crazy. I booked uh, both blood clot tours i did so i don't give a shit about that but i'd, I'd like to uh, find out like how did you book your first tours so in the punk world in the diy scene nobody has any money there's no big promoters you're not playing big venues right you're really working off a loosely connected network of local organizers who have the wherewithal to book a local show Some of these people might have been people we knew already Mm -hmm. from just going to shows or hanging out in the scene. Or Or people that you opened up for when they when they come to Seattle, you open up for them and then you say, oh, hey, remember us? Sure. We play with these in Seattle. So can you book us a gig in St. Louis? Yeah. Some of these organizers happen to be friends of ours from different cities and Mm -hmm. stuff. 
And then the rest are all just connections that we would get. So uh, maybe an organizer from one town would give you the connection of someone in a town three mm -hmm. hours away. Mm -hmm. uh, there was also this resource called Book Your Own Fucking Life, which was right. uh, a website that was sort of loosely connected to Maximum Rock and Roll. Ah, no. It was originally a print format. Okay. That's how I booked the first Blood Clots uh, tour. Was uh, it was like a uh, eight and a half by eleven printed out, uh, all the connections in every every city. That's interesting um, because you uh, did it on the on the on the on the internet. Book your own fucking life. I did it off the early tours. Was hmm. a mix okay, between okay. internet and phone calls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because book still... your own fucking life fills in the gaps of people yeah. that you didn't already know from the beginning. Exactly. Because back then, I mean, still yeah. a lot of people weren't really heavily using computers so much. Right. So some of the connections, we just had a phone number. Right, right. We called some guy named Spike from, right. you know, no, I remember Albuquerque yeah. or whatever, and he would give us, you know, directions off the freeway, and then none of us had GPS or anything, so you went on tour you had an atlas yeah you had a bunch yeah, of printouts no GPS of back emails then. Right. and handwritten notes and right. you just sort of did a wing and a prayer and made uh made it to shows somehow i tell you this this happened to us in milwaukee uh i was phone tagging with this guy in milwaukee to book our concert and we lost the connection somehow at some point i couldn't get a hold of him so we were passing through milwaukee anyway and we're like oh fuck we don't have a show in milwaukee that guy really dropped the ball fuck it we're in milwaukee what do you do in milwaukee beer city we're gonna go fucking drink right so we go to the first bar we pretty much found in downtown and we we're all just the four of us sitting there drinking and all of a sudden this guy rips open the door and yells at us are you guys the fucking blood clots? And we turn it around. We're like, yeah, you're supposed to be playing down the fucking street. We're like, wait, what? It's like, yeah, the fucking concert is going on right now. We're like, what? what? Oh shit. Okay, cool, cool. Okay, uh, slam those down. But but it was it was like that. Like like things were just so. Um, hand to mouth is that the right way to say it or 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 like 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 tongue in cheek or uh, <laughs> i don't know where i'm going with flying this. by the seat of your pants flying by the seat of your pants yeah skin of your teeth kind That's of thing right. that you never you never knew if that was gonna happen you know like oh fuck i guess the concert didn't get booked and then you drive by a venue with your name on it like oh fuck, shit i guess we're playing there tonight you know uh the, the the concert didn't end up that good but you know it was a super interesting example of how this shit can work out you yeah. know so it's kind of one of those things you never know if this random promoter you've been writing to is going to disappear if he's going to show up if you know right if you, you never know if you have places to stay in the u.s right in europe you do but in the U.S. You really, it's really kind of a, a roll of the dice every every time, unless you know the promoter personally and you've mm. already arranged these stuff, the, these things ahead of time. So often, you know, we'd be on tour and during the middle of our set, we would have to get on the mic and be like, "Hey, if anyone has right. a place for us to crash, that would be super cool." Because uh, yeah, we don't no. know anyone here, no. you know. That happened to us a few times. Like, okay, cool. Where do we crash tonight? I don't know. I live at my mom's. Uh, she got floor space. <laughs> <laughs> Is she cool? So that, that that that's basic DIY tour. You, you're not hiring a fucking manager to do it for you. You're doing it yourself. You know. Yeah. Uh, that's why the perfect title: book your own fucking life. You yeah. know. It's like you did it, you know. And one thing I think that's interesting about it, it's it makes the punk scene completely, really different from any other music scene yeah. where you're. I mean, how do you do a DIY country western tour? I'm it, sure there's people. Is it that possible? Do it. I think you could do it now with the internet. The internet has made everything so small. I think you could. Sure. You know, you 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 have a band page with followers, and you say, "Hey, we're going on tour." 
uh, anybody who helped yeah. us out, uh, give us a like. Or, but or I think I think with punk, I think people are more inclined to work at it and make a yeah. great experience because these local people throwing shows in small towns, they're really number one who's helping put their town on the map and yeah. also giving bands an incentive to come there. And the more touring bands that come through their town, the stronger their scene gets, the bigger their scene gets. Mm -hmm. And if they become known for, you know, being a good organizer, then all of a sudden, boom, their town is a regular stop on everyone's yeah. DIY tour. Uh, I mean, I mean, uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but the best shows we ever played on tour was, I mean, I can't even remember the names of the cities, but uh, they would, they would organize the the kids would do it themselves as well, organize a fucking hall and all get together. And since there's nothing else to do in these tiny fucking places. People would drive from miles and miles and counties away, and you would just have the most amazing shows, you know, yeah. to where you'd play somewhere like New York City, and nobody gives a fuck about uh, blood clots or phalanx. Ugh, never heard of them. Fuck off, you know. Yeah, totally. To where to where you play a little little place, and and people are like, don't even never heard of them. Don't give a fuck. I'm going, you know. Yeah, but there's also another interesting thing that happens too is that, you know, you play a town. And you play a small town and there's tons of kids and, you know, it's an amazing gig. You probably made more money than you did in the big city, yeah. you know, but you try to go back there three years later. Right. And sometimes it's falling apart. Yeah. Because all of those kids oh. got inspired by all these touring bands and then they decided to move out of there. Right. You right. Know, Can be. Or the person who organized it for you, uh, I don't know, had a family, got a job, yeah, yeah, totally. da, 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 you know, huh. It's true. I want to hear some stories about Blood Clot Store because oh, you don't you don't talk about it too much. I heard there was it wasn't really that interesting. I heard you guys had some interesting devices you took with you on tour. Okay, that sounds really weird and sexual. Uh, but no, you made it yeah. sexual. I just said weird devices. I know. I just I always go with that with everything. Um. Yeah. Well, we had we had the big charged hair with the with the we charged hair with soap and hairspray. So if you're in a Band like that, you can't redo your hair every day. You, you you put it up and you change it every week. You know, I, th I think we did about once a week. But how do you sleep on it? All three of us, uh, the drummer had short hair, so he didn't give a fuck. But the three of us with the big hair, we all showed up at the first tour with our own devices of how to sleep uh, with, with our hair up. You know, everybody had their own creation. Mine was two planks, plank boards inside of a pillowcase that kind of like folded down to make sort of a downward. It's hard to explain. I, 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 if anybody's interested, I'll show them someday. But, but Squints had the best one. He had like a we call it the Stonehenge because it, it was like a pillow that just like kind of like uh, had the uh, a, like a block with the middle cut out, and he would just sleep on his back. With it, with his head like in the air, <laughs> that way. You so know it's like I mean? a neck pillow, kind of. Yeah, kind of, but but like solid. You know what I mean? Okay. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, like like a neck pillow you would buy for for an airplane trip, but like solid. You know? Uh, yeah. I, I I have so many pictures of him sleeping with Stonehenge. It's fucking amazing. That's why you guys look so good on tour all the time. Hey, you got you got to think about this shit. You know, you do. I mean, how do you fucking tour as a fucking uh, spiky hair punk band when you when you can't do it every day? You know? Yeah, those are the things, you know. Because kids are gonna go to the show and they're gonna be wanting to see the hair. Yeah, I mean that's half the reason they go. <laughs> I don't know. So so many stories. We we, yeah. The one place I was thinking about, I was reminiscing about was was uh, I don't remember where it was, but we were in Missouri, right along the big river, Mississippi. <laughs> Didn't we do this last episode? It's like, have. what's the big river in Mississippi? <laughs> the Mississippi. Oh, right. Uh, but I think the Mississippi goes through Missouri as well. I think the Missouri River goes through Missouri. Also. I don't fucking 
<laughs> anyway, I just remember we were right by this big river, and, and and when you're near a big river, you have a lot of mosquitoes in the summer, and we're just getting attacked by mosquitoes with the big hair. It's like, oh, so annoying. But uh, these kids, they they were amazing. They 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 made us stickers. They're like, here, we made stickers for you. They handed us like a couple hundred stickers, all of them hand colored, not with our logo, just like with, with what they thought, you know, could be a cool Buck Lots logo and then colored it in and gave it to us. We're like, oh, that's amazing. That's really cool. Yeah. And then they, they hand colored every flyer for the concert as well. Here, here, here's, here's why I want to tell a story. Uh, at the bottom of the flyer, uh, the part that wasn't hand colored in was a, photo, uh, a Xerox photograph of the, of this uh, kid, and it's his face. And next to it said, "He'll be naked." And I was like, uh, "That's weird. Whatever." Uh, they threw a big party for us after the concert, and he was naked. <laughs> Let's qualify this. He was just hanging out, kid. Okay, he was over <laughs> eighteen. Sorry, 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 sorry. Yes, we we do have to qualify it. He was definitely over eighteen. For those of you who might be confused when we say the word "kid," is like right. in the punk scene, anybody younger than us is kid. <laughs> I, yeah, I even call people older than me kids. You know, it's true. <laughs> we can edit that out. <laughs> I, I told you this was going to be a good one. <laughs> I didn't know it was going to go in a weird place like this, but I knew it was going to be a good one. Hey, you're the one with the weird devices. But uh, so we're in the middle of our set, you know, and, and they stop us in the middle of the set. And we're like, what? And you know, when somebody stops you in the middle, because like you were saying, you got the adrenaline, you're going, you know, you're just powering through, smashing the fucking song. You're like, ah. And they stop us. They're like, hey, stop, stop. Wait a minute. No, no, don't fucking stop us, motherfucker. We're, we're here to fucking play. Like, yeah, but uh, we're going to throw flaming darts at his back. I'm like, yeah, okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, Go on. You don't fucking stop us for anything. We're going to throw flaming darts at his back. That, on the <laughs> other hand, we will stop for. <laughs> so, no, we, we had an intermission in the middle of our set where they threw flaming darts at naked dudes back. And it was amazing. <laughs> you can't, you can't, you can't write this shit, you know? This actually has to happen. So, but that's the thing. Like, like the most amazing stories come from the smallest towns. Uh, do you remember anything from like a, like a, Small town where you're like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> I do. Uh, Phalanx, on our U.S. tour in 2003, we toured with our friends in Born Dead from Oakland. Okay. And we played a show in Albuquerque. One of the guys who helped set up the show, it was a house show. We played with like some metal band. And one of the guys who helped organize the show, or he was like involved, he, he, got, <laughs> he got caught cheating on his girlfriend, who was also at the show. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. but what was what? And that's not cool. No. But what was funny about it? That was, was my ay 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 noise. The, it's like that's not cool. Ay, 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 ay. The young lady that he ended up making out with and hooking up with at the show mm -hmm. was also completely painted orange. Like her whole face and her arms, she was like painted orange, and she had, had some sort of weird colored hair thing going on. And this is and well before Donald Trump, so it wasn't a. It wasn't a spray tan. <laughs> She, it was like it was like a you know performance art okay face painted thing okay so like body paint yeah body kind of thing okay good okay. and uh, he comes out of the bathroom mm -hmm. and he's got orange paint all over his face and all over his hands <laughs> you were with her I don't know what you're talking <laughs> about it's kind of written all over your face bro. <laughs> About caught orange handed. Yeah. Right. Oh my God. There's there's so many <laughs> there's so many jokes right now we can do. So that um, that was like that was just one one little fast, but it's oh, it's one of these amazing. things like when you're on tour, right? You end up in very bizarre situations yeah. that I don't think any other person that travels for anything ever endures. No. Like very weird, bizarre things yeah. happen to you, and you see. You know, you see crazy fights, you see yeah. like hilarious things, you meet very bizarre people. Like it's, it's 
it's it's hard to i mean i i gotta tell you because uh like when i when i when i stopped singing in bands i started i was that's when i was starting to tattoo and to me it was like okay it's like the same thing you know except i don't have to rely on three other people to ruin my band it's just me and i was kind of doing you know traveling around tour style conventions and guest spots and shit but i i, I tell you there there's still is nothing like a punk tour yeah you know i mean I've, I've been doing tattoo tours for 20 years now but man i mean the stories uh, i can tell you many fucking great tattoo tour stories but they're never going to compare to the punk tour stories they're just, mm -hmm. just insane but 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 a lot of people don't get that a lot of, a lot of maybe people that are listening to us uh, don't understand what the what the what the reality of DIY is so one you know? one thing that we should talk about and I oh. I sort of alluded to the fact that I was in a van that broke down I've been in several vans that have broken down so when well, yeah. when you're on I tour mean, that's a standard you know the, the, the that's why the La Fraction fucking uh, uh, tour DVD was get in the van. Yeah, yeah. you know, because everybody knows Ugh, the van's broken. Get in the van. Uh, oh, <laughs> fuck. Oh, bro. push the van. Okay, push gotta the push the van. Oh, fuck. Push the van, van and broke. then get okay. in the van. Now, get in the van. Oh, fuck. get in the van real quick. Ugh. So when you're when you're broke, you know, aspiring young musicians, and yeah. you're doing everything yourself, you're putting out your own records, you're booking your own tours. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you're not going to be touring in like a super sweet streamlining, you know, no rock star bus. No, you know, with all the scandal involved, you're touring in, you know, a barely standing dilapidated Ford Econoline van. Yeah. Maybe the steering column is a little off and maybe you have to like fill it up with oil every two shows. Yeah. You know, you're constantly in a relative state of peril. Mm -hmm. no and crap. this van is your lifeline. It's also yeah. what's going to get you home. Yeah. The, the security of the van is an issue because people break into it and steal yeah. your shit. Indeed. And you could flip the van on the highway and all right. of you could die. See, on the Blood Clot Tour, we had a trailer off of the van for the drum equipment because we kind of decked out the, the back for sleeping and guitar cabs. You, you guys started with full, full stacks, right? Yeah, of course. They were so crazy about their Marshall full stacks. I, uh, I was the singer, so I was not the Marshall full stack crazed member but they were you know so they had to tour with them okay cool whatever so they, they we had the marshall full stacks in the back and then drum gear in a trailer but here's the thing that i want to tell you uh talking about security of vans we this trailer loaded from the back so every time we played a concert we had to make sure that we parallel parked Mm -hmm. with something to we would we would load the drums out of the back and then we, when we loaded them back in we would always have to make sure that there was something blocking that so nobody could just come by and swipe all the fucking drum gear yeah i i, I specifically because uh parallel parking a van with a trailer behind it in manhattan was fucking mental yeah that's a mess <laughs> the last the last tour i was on our van got broken into as well yeah on the totenwald tour no shit i didn't I, you didn't tell me about this yeah we where, were, where was that so uh in september of 2019 I booked a west coast tour for my band totenwald okay and, we, uh, we talked a little bit about that before but, yeah uh, we went from seattle down to san diego and back up on. and the first shows that we had uh, the first show that we had was a festival called the Near Dark Fest that happens in Oakland. And it's a great okay. fest. Was awesome. It's all like mm -hmm. you know, dark punk, anarcho punk, uh, goth sort of oriented bands, and it's a three day festival. In um, it in happens Oakland. before daylight savings. <laughs> and so we near dark. Never mind. Oh, we, I'm we, sorry. we have a drum machine, so we don't right. we don't have to have like a massive vehicle so oh. i rented us kind of like this nice soccer mom van it was a uh it was a chrysler and it was okay. it was super comfortable on the inside but it was black and it mm -hmm. had tinted windows and it looked a little like semi-fancy no uh fancy by my standards 
which aren't which isn't really fancy. Well, but... punk, punk kids in a black fucking van with tinted windows that always looks suspicious <laughs> though. So I so, know but we this. we parked around the corner. All of our gear was out of the van, but someone broke into it anyways. Uh, uh, there was a backpack sick. left in there, and uh, yeah, someone yeah, someone had broken into our van. And like a couple days, right around the same time, our friends in this band over from Portland, who we played a couple shows with on that tour. Over, yeah, over is uh, Dave. That was that was in Nux Vomica and Wake Up on Fire. Oh yeah, and, uh, and they're like. Awesome. They're like an awesome new post punk band. From, I, don't, I don't know from, anything from about it. Fantastic. Why, why haven't you told me about this? Why Def- haven't Dave told me about this? Definitely anyway. go check out Over on uh, okay. uh, on the. So it's Over like the like the English word, just straight up O V E R. Yeah. No no umlauts or weird. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, and they were they had their cool. van they had their van parked in you know mm-hmm. just a parking lot. They were. They were in some store and they came out and uh, yeah, a bunch of their gear got stolen, their backpacks and stuff. So it's like mm. anytime you're on tour, all of your belongings and everything that you have and all yeah. of your equipment can be stolen in a yeah, second. Yeah, yeah. You're going to have your life taken away. Yeah. So a lot of times at night, uh, someone in the entourage might need to sleep in the van right, to right, right. help protect it from right. encroaching, you know, no, Jimmy always, Jimmy always, uh, the drummer of the book class, Jimmy always slept in the van. Yeah. He was super happy to sleep in the van yeah. every night. Fun yeah. fact though, uh, the van, if you do end up being the person who sleeps in the van, uh-huh. You're one of the few people that actually gets to experience some level of privacy. It's true. On tour. That's true. And you don't have to be in a room full of uh, like five snoring people. So like, uh, you know, sometimes sleeping uh, in the van is a good thing. But yeah. if it's really cold out or if you're in a super dangerous neighborhood, maybe uh, it's not the greatest experience. I mean, we never we never toured during winter. We always did summer tours. So, yeah. ah, man, it's so long ago. All, the, all these old memories are just bringing up all sorts of... Stupid, crazy stories. Mm. But sometimes, sometimes, fuck, where were we? (laughs) (laughs) Where are we? (laughs) Sometimes, uh, sometimes, sometimes when we tell. (laughs) Okay, okay. You know, can we make that last part a break? I'm sorry, that was a super weird segue into a break, uh, but uh, totally lost my train of thought and couldn't recover. Realized I needed a cigarette, but I just want to come back and, and, and talk about what, what it actually means to be a punk band on tour. You know, I think there's no experience like that in the world. Like I was saying, you know, I've traveled across the the country united states have traveled across the world as a tattoo artist but there's still nothing like being in a punk band on tour and it's diy you never know what the fuck is gonna happen but it is the the biggest charge you can get in your life is driving to random cities in the middle of nowhere and playing your fucking heart out to a crowd who doesn't even give a shit about you and yeah, I don't, why do we keep doing it, you know? I mean, for me, I think uh, when I'm on tour, I feel like everything that I've been working for and all this time that I spent, like, busting my ass, saving money, organizing, mm-hmm. getting releases ready, designing covers, getting merch ready. When I'm on tour, I feel like everything that I want to do is happening. Right. At that moment. So this is everything you've prepared for your entire life, and it's right now. Because I mean, right. we all we all have our work life, and yeah. you know, we you and I are career driven. So our work also is part of our motivation for mm-hmm. doing our everyday thing. Like our work is meaningful to us, so we work hard. But there's work life, and then there's creative life, which aren't always the same thing even if you work in a creative industry. So for me, when I'm on tour, uh, I feel like it's the one time that I'm living my creative Mm -hmm. passion. 
Mm-hmm. Like I'm f- right. so I'm completely fully invested in it. I'm right. not stressed out. So maybe sometimes you're stressed out about stuff going back at home or your work or whatever. But mm-hmm. most of the time you're just in the now experiencing mm-hmm. stuff and you're with your best friends and you're, you know, risking your lives. Sometimes mm-hmm. you're getting into really silly situations. You're having mm-hmm. fun. You're sharing your art with people. You're meeting and making new friends. I think it's uh, I think it's really one of the best best experiences you can have as a person, particularly if you play music. Oh, okay, cool. That's what I wanted to hear. I wanted to hear the definitive statement on a punk tour, and you did it. That was good. We were talking about this earlier, and I, I, I don't know if we went over this too much, but I also wanted to just talk about the... A lot of people just don't know what the, what what DIY is. Uh, can we talk about DIY for a minute, you know? Well, I mean, I think in, in essence, DIY culture, at least in this context, when we're talking about... Let's, let's, let's bring it back first. We have to say DIY means do it yourself. Yes. That's, that's the abbreviation. Yeah. However, DIY, DIY in 2021 also has other meanings. Like yeah, of course. if you're in England, DIY generally by mainstream culture means that you're working on your house. What? <laughs> no, it's true. Like if you're if you're doing home renovations and you're doing stuff, and also in the okay, states as okay, well. Okay, okay. Cause, but 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 we grew up in the punk scene, so for us DIY was do it yourself. As far as punk related, like 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 you you book your own tour, you put out your own record, you make the record yourself. Sure, you know, and you, you 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 cut and paste everything. Uh, I think that's a perfect way of describing punk life: cut and paste. Mm-hmm. You know. Uh, tour is cut and paste, you know, uh, putting out a record is cut and paste. Everything is sure. just figuring it out by the seat of your pants. In, in essence, a lot of what that comes from is not having, you know, major labels and big right. businesses and corporations support what you're doing. Right. So in that, if you don't have that kind of backing, mm-hmm. you make your own culture and you create it yourself mm-hmm. and you... Oh, nice carve out the existence and the the environment that you want to live in you build Mm -hmm. it yourself Mm -hmm. that's it you know if if you're unhappy that there's not like a really cool punk zine in your city then Mm -hmm. you make one yourself honestly i don't think it's necessarily a punk scene i think it's like if you're in a small town and you're bored as fuck and somebody comes through town and they're playing fast music about being bored as fuck, you relate to it, you know? Yeah. Uh, I think that's what it is. I think that's where the culture comes from. Angst of nothing fucking happening. I think it's part of that, but I don't think it's always necessarily rooted in angst. I think there's a lot of positivity about it as well. Well, I'm just getting a beer. Sorry. (laughs) Gonna fuck you up? No, uh, not at all. I just wanted to watch you do that. Oh shit! Okay, <laughs> I, wa- I walked away to get a beer, and and I, uh, anyway. But right. but what I'm saying is like it's not necessarily. Here, here, here's that beer. Here, I'm gonna open. A, I'm gonna open a beer on the mic, and uh, don't edit this out. Yeah. <laughs> no one will ever hear that. Come on. <laughs> Nobody, nobody understands that this man hates me more than anybody on the planet. That's not true. It's true. I'm sure there's plenty of people that hate hey, you should way we do more a than... podcast about our relationship? <laughs> isn't, what, isn't what this whole project is? <laughs> I guess so. I guess so. Anyway, 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 anyway. Back to, back to. Uh, you know what would be a great idea? What? What? If we made a podcast where we just. Talk about how we know each other. <laughs> Fuck. Huh. How would that work? Hmm. Okay. Okay. I'm with you. I'm with you. Um, but, 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 uh, I, I liked what you were saying before about like, like, uh, building culture in small towns. You know? I mean, for, for me, when I was growing up, uh, there were uh, a few people in the Colorado scene, one of which is a guy named Justin Lent. He was, he and what his brother. He and his brother were in the Clusterfucks. Clusterfuck, <clears throat> right. We opened up for them in Denver a couple times. I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. Justin had a, a little zine Super and nice a distro. Mm-hmm. And 
I started seeing these folded one page like little mail order mm -hmm. pamphlets and it, it, it he would have like the seven inches of his bands that he was putting out on his label mm -hmm. and like some screen printed shirts and patches and when i saw this for the first time i was like holy shit you can just make this mm -hmm. you know you weren't just a consumer like you could actually build and create something for other people to experience and enjoy right and right. You know, that, if it, I mean, that's 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 the DIY is 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 you're 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 listening to music on the radio, you're looking at magazines at the store with the glossy covers, but you have your ideas that you want to express to the world as well. Mm -hmm. So you want to be in a band, you want to put out a magazine. It ain't gonna get on the fucking rack at the fucking grocery store, but uh, you still have a voice and you want to fucking let it be heard, and you do it, and other people that also agree with it uh, pick up on it. It's hard for me to talk about because it's such a such a such a something I grew up in, something that I've been in. It's, it's, it's the interesting thing. That's why I was very interested in this episode of how it would work out is because how do I talk about something that I know inherently? Mm -hmm. You know, this is, this is me. This is who I am. This is how I am. DIY or die, you know? And we'll, we'll talk about that. Um, fuck, how, how do you talk about that? You know, I don't know. You know what I mean, though. You know yeah. what I mean. Uh, so for people that don't, it, it's uh, it's almost like if you don't know, then you don't know. You know, but I don't want it to be like that. I was hoping this podcast could be like we're letting people know what that experience is like, but I can't really explain it. I I yeah. can't. I think it's one of the most beautiful things ever to be able to be like, I have this idea for music. I'm gonna record it. I'm going to put it out. I'm going to fucking send it to a pressing plant that will give me the cheapest thing. And I'm going to Xerox the covers and just hand it out to my friends. And fuck, that's amazing. I'm going to make a zine and I'm just going to fucking Xerox it and hand it out to my friends. Who gives a fuck? You know, I don't know. That's 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 the beauty of DIY to me. You know? Yeah, I think this is turning into more of a DIY episode than tour story episode yeah, well, that's okay that's yeah. okay you i know? mean you had a masturbation story and what's more diy oh, than come that? On. <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 that, that's true that's but true. you know in the late 90s you and i were yeah. grumbling about how all of the zines right the fanzines that were out in seattle were right. all like overly serious or overly political or there wasn't it was so fucking boring it's like let's let's read another fucking like story about how boring fucking everything is <laughs> <laughs> so we were like let's do something funny let's let's talk shit to each other we we uh people don't remember our zine we did a zine but uh our zine was just uh rob and i talking shit to each other in, in print. print format <laughs> yeah which was crazy and everybody loved it because they're like we've never seen anything like this before what are you guys doing yeah we even put smear ads against each other yeah, well, in the you zine did to me it was great i did i never did one for you <laughs> i i yeah but that was the thing it, it went to press uh, press as far as like uh being xeroxed on uh kinko copies <laughs> Uh, but I, I some somehow I didn't see the smear ad, and then uh, you know I'm holding a, flipping through, and like okay, 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 this is my stuff. This is my... What the fuck? <laughs> 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 so good. I was like, what? I want to make a political smear ad. Right, but I think I think I think <laughs> I think, but I think we're doing a similar thing with this podcast, and I don't know why anybody's even listening right now because Rob and I are just talking at each other. You're also assuming people uh, are listening. Oh, right. <laughs> I know, I have that problem. But uh, that was our idea with the podcast. Is like, uh, let's just do it kind of like the zine where we just talk shit maybe my mom and zach will get a kick out of it <laughs> <laughs> we're counting on you guys <laughs> come on zach <laughs> 
the Zaz is staying there though. We have to mm. we have to give props to Zach. But anyway, 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 anyway. You and I are getting older. There's there's no uh, uh, denying that. Unfortunately, no. Um, and so I remember the first tours I was doing of how amazing it was to be young and on the road. And now I'm a little bit older, as you can tell by my voice. Rob, Rob is still doing it. I don't know how he still does it. But to me, my question is, how are you still doing this? You know? Well, with touring, I had to learn a few lessons early on just out of self-preservation. So one was that I had to start wearing ear protection. Oh, because okay, 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 okay. when you're on yeah. tour and you're you know, being blasted with like fantastically loud music every single night, it's going to take a toll on your hearing and just playing in a band in general. So I started, mm -hmm. uh, I started wearing earplugs cause I started getting tinnitus and tinnitus is like the ringing mm -hmm. in your ear that oh, happens yeah. when you're, you know, the organ inner organs in your ear mm -hmm. start dying. I, I have a shrieking in my ear. Yeah. Uh, you might need to start wearing ear protection at concerts. Yeah. My friend. Fuck it. <laughs> Rock and roll, baby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the second was really trying to find some sort of balance diet-wise, because okay, if you're if you're on tour, uh, you know, a lot of times your main source of sustenance is going to be shit you find in a gas station, yeah. or whatever roadside diner that you're going to descend upon. Mm -hmm. So uh, I learned that when you're in a city make a, a point of finding a grocery store and getting yourself some healthy food to eat because cool. you might be going weeks on end without ever seeing a vegetable or a fruit so That's true there's that and i think the other harder one was just you have to kind of like pace yourself too and try to take care of yourself drink water that's the other yes. that's yes. the other thing everyone fucking forgets it's drink just like water. drink lots of water chug water the yeah. entire time and you're gonna you're gonna do all right. That sounded great because that's why where, where I wanted to get to. This is like as much as we've been talking about DIY. I think I think I think uh, I want to go back to it real quick and just say one of the best things about DIY is when you do it yourself and then you did it. You're like, fuck yeah, I did that. Mm, it's so good. But 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 it's true. When you're young, it's easy to sleep on somebody's floor. Uh, as you get older, it gets a little more and more difficult every time. I, I honestly, I don't understand how you can still do it. I think what uh, what I'm getting to is I would I would like to do the next episode about getting old. I think aging is a very relative thing for a lot of people, and yeah, even young people get old. Yeah, some people, <laughs> some people act super old when they're like 24. We, we got a shout out to Zach again. <laughs> <laughs> what I mean by relative is like, okay, for example, I was looking at the high school reunion group on Facebook from my high school. Oh, well, that's never a good idea. Well, it's a good idea because I don't, go to, I don't go to the reunions. No. But I also morbidly like to observe what has happened to some of these people, yeah, particularly some yeah. of the people I didn't get along with yeah. very well. Yeah. And it's crazy because some sometimes I'm looking at the pictures of these mm -hmm. reunions and I know these people, I know how old they are. And some of them are older than me. Right. But I look at their pictures and I'm like, holy shit, this guy looks like he's fucking 65. Right. What happened? You know, like. Right. And That's the weirdo shit is when you look at people who are younger than you and you're like, fuck, how old is that guy? Yeah. Wait, he's younger than me. Yeah. How the fuck? So I think there's a difference between, you know, holding on to your yep. your adolescence and never letting it go and right. being caught in that period of time which isn't a positive thing right, right, right. but there's also the other side of it where people decided to age how society decided for them and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know they got locked into you know a really brutal corporate career that beats them down every day and they're miserable right. and maybe their kids hate them and they hate their kids mm -hmm. and they look old as fuck Mm -hmm. So the middle ground is actually taking the energy and the vigor from your youth and putting it into like constructive stuff for your future while also being able to accept that you're getting older and to adjust to that. 
because mm-hmm. nobody wants to hang out with a 45 year old 13 year old you know what I mean? Oh, thanks a lot. Well, you're more like <laughs> you're more like uh, nineteen. <laughs> okay. Oh, man, not you okay. Okay. Uh, are we done? Did we did we finish? Okay. Um, I think you hit it out of the park. Maybe kid. I'm still going. Maybe I'm still going. Um. Uh, okay. Until next time. This has been Jack. This is Rob, and uh, stay safe. Stay healthy. Wear earplugs. <laughs> and just remember, when you're on the ferry. Masturbate with friends. <laughs> we can end that out! We can end that out! Hey. We can end that out! But I, will, I think that will be an amazing episode of talking about getting older having kids or not having kids whatever this these are just our random observations on stupid shit so if you want to get upset about it get upset please write us in mail because what's our what's our email address again i don't remember remember it what is our email address okay 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 so so follow us on you can Follow us on Instagram at we can edit that out underscore podcast. And uh, if you want to uh, send us threats or uh, suggestions or threatening suggestions, you can write to us at we can edit that out podcast at gmail.com.